Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Friday and welcome to Beyond the Steps. This is the show that explores all topics that are affecting performance athletes, ranging from anything from racism, gender and equity, sex abuse and prevention, nutrition, psychology, and of course, dance medicine and science. I am Bree Zabrowski, co-founder and CEO of Apollo Performance Wear, here with my fabulous friend and co-host, Melissa McDaniel Grisham. Uh, we love doing this, this uh, show every Friday, being with all of you. We've had some great conversations this season, and we're going to keep it going today. Uh, we're here with Mindy. Andy Jackson, and we're talking about the do's and don'ts of applying and auditioning. And I cannot tell you how excited I am for this conversation. It could not be more timely with, with everything from college auditions to competitive company auditions to intensives and nationals and whatever is going on in the dance world. It's on and popping. And Mindy, I'm sure, has some great perspective for us. I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. So, Melissa, without any further ado, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about Mindy and we'll get started. We are so excited to have Mindy here with us today. She has a long biography of wonderful things that she's done. I'm just going to pick some of the some of the biggest things that I can that I can uh, think of here. Mindy Jackson, the director of professional training and contemporary faculty at Steps on Broadway, has been a professional dancer, choreographer, rehearsal director, teacher, and youth mentor for concert concert dance, theater enrichment programs, music videos, and television for over 20 years. Notable credits include being recognized by Dance Magazine with an e-news exclusive and showcases the style model in the continuing issues of the publication. She's worked with top contemporary and theater dance makers of um, great numbers, Azure Barton, Cherise Barton, Monica Bill Barnes, Andrea Miller, Camille A. Brown, Josh Prince. I could be here all day naming all of these amazing people uh, that she's worked with. She's also worked in Cape Town, South Africa's a Kappa Dance Theater to highlight, and that's just highlighting a few, y'all. Just a few. Honorable mentions for her choreography include being selected as one of four pieces for the North Carolina Dance Festival History to Perform in the American Dance Festival's 80th anniversary celebration, as well as being selected by Inception to Exhibition to perform in Bryant Park's Contemporary Dance Summer Series. She's a former wow. teaching artist for Alvin Ailey Dance Theater, ASAP program, which stands for Ailey Students, Ailey Pros, Dance Waves Dancing Through College and Beyond, and is a proud mom of two little girls. Well, yes, <laughs> Mindy, you are, we like, we have a legend, basically. Right. <laughs> um, we, uh, this is incredible. It's a uh, welcome. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Thank you for so, Yes, it's just have, it's amazing to have somebody with your expertise and your background here to talk about this topic. Um, we want to jump right into it because I imagine that we're going to have a lot of elaboration that we want to do to make sure that everybody gets as much information as they possibly can. Um, so I'm going to start with just a real baseline question. How crucial is the application process for any program compared to the audition itself? And what's the most mm -hmm. common mistake you see people making and not distinguishing between the two? Okay, so, um, and I'll preface, thank you for that intro, very generous. Um, I will preface all of this. These are my opinions, my perspective. I can't speak on any others, but what I'm hoping is that a lot of the themes that I bring up are universal in that, you know, mainly here, I'm going to start this whole conversation off. We are rooting for you. We want mm -hmm. you in our programs. We want to hire you for our companies. We are rooting for you. We do not have an audition hoping that everyone in the room like fails, like no way, right. Jose. We are sitting behind that table with with open minds, open hearts, and like so excited to see what you have to offer. So a big thing for me is the application is almost as important as the work you're presenting. And I mean the attention to detail, um, reading what is asked of you um timeliness so paying attention to your deadlines and not submitting at you know 11 59 the day before the uh, or the day that the application is due um because we i can't help you if you run across a problem and the deadline is right now you know that's not putting you in your best light to show that you kind of did all that you needed to do 
to get ahead of it. So I really take those things into account because I think that it really shows your character and it shows the kind of professional and the kind of student that we hope to be working with. Mm -hmm. um, I tell my conservatory students from day one orientation that I'm treating you as the professional you want to be. Um, okay. You are in this program, not your parents. So I want to make sure that, yes, I realize that there's a huge distinction from high school and the schedule that you've had and the, you know, the reliance that you have on your family, because of course you do. And then there's a huge transition when you're coming to New York City and you're on your own now and you have all of that adulting to figure out in a very like that. So I respect mm -hmm. all of that. But if we could backpedal a little bit, that preparation that goes into that application is already starting that that journey right. into professionalism mm -hmm. and into adult. So I have had a lot of parents do the application for their students. And while I think that your parent can help you, I do think it's very important for you to do the application. Your parent mm -hmm. can reach out with questions, but I think it's important that you reach out with questions. Um, I will say, however, please do not reach out to just say like, can I have more information about your program? Um, I had a panel I was on a couple of years ago and the people said, I don't even answer those emails. And that was a little startling to me because I just feel like I'm not going to do that. I'm going to answer, but I'm basically going to direct you to our website, which I think right. then reflects on you going, oh yeah, I could have done that myself. So usually I say, please check out the website and, you know, third and then let me know if any questions are still remaining. Um, but I do, again, all of this long-winded answer kind of comes back to staying on top of it for yourself. Take your time so that you're not down to the wire and then your application's incomplete. You mm -hmm. miss something. Um, so that timeliness and that attention to detail, um, I'm just checking my notes if I missed anything I wanted to say. And just completing everything, not leaving something blank, um, is as important to me as the work you're presenting in the dance portion of those auditions. Right. 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 I I think it, it, I'm sitting here listening to you going, how can somebody not know these things? But it's obvious, like, from you saying them that there's so many people that don't know to do this. So that's why we're doing this episode today. I think that's fabulous insight from somebody who is receiving the applications on a regular basis and um, just the insight and the common things that we see go wrong. This is like, this is such a crucial episode. So be sure to like, share, subscribe, make sure to go back and watch this from the beginning at whatever point that you're joining us today. And uh, let's get started with the first segment. So this is a three prong question, but I'm gonna start with the first couple. So do you have any recommendations on how to determine if a program or a school is right for you before applying? And how is the best way to determine that through, is it through research? Is it visiting? Is it all of the above? You know, talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, I do think it's a bit of all of the above. I think that, again, coming down to research for yourself, every business, I is legitimate has a website so mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. and they have spent the time to get that information up there for their customer so it is really important that you are doing your research thoroughly look at all the tabs go down a little rabbit hole um i don't mind questions i think it's wonderful that you reach out to the people at the school so that you can get more information but again i think it comes from after the fact I read this and I wanted clarification. Right. Um, right. Also, social media, ladies, I don't, it wasn't there for us when we no, were going to school. So <laughs> it's a huge resource now. Um, I can, again, only speak on behalf of Steps on Broadway. We have tons of videos. It gives you the feel for who we are and what we do. Um, the conservatory has its own Instagram at Steps NYC, no, at Steps Conservatory NYC. So that gives you also another insight into the vibe, into the community component, into the training that we're offering. And again, mm -hmm. most programs are doing this. Um, so I think it is, that's 
part of your research. I have many students reach out to say, hey, could you connect me with one of your students? I'd love to ask questions to them. And I then, of course, if it's appropriate, if I have a student that is willing, available, absolutely would love for that to happen. Um, I know that financially every family is different. And so visiting multiple schools may or may not be in your budget. If it is, I would certainly recommend that you feel it in real in real life because again it comes down to energy and it comes down to vibe and if you for steps you can take O class to get a feel for what the conservatory feels like. Um, yeah. So I think that all the things. Um, the research yeah, so when, yeah, I love that. So when you're applying to programs, you know Sometimes you meet the people that are like, I have it in my head that I am going to be in this one program and this is the one for me. And I wanted this since I was little and all my friends are applying to it and this is what I want to do. Right. But the reality is, is just because you want it that bad and that's the one that you have your heart set on, it may really not be a great fit for you once you dig in and do the research or it, you just may not have a place there. And so, you know, everybody always talks about that backup plan. How many, pro, how many programs is too many or is there too many to be applying to at one time? And should you apply for a program, even if it's clear from the onset that it is not a financially viable option for you? So I, again, this comes down to families' budget and their decision. So if every application costs something, then you certainly, in my opinion, don't want to, I mean, if it's available to you, go ahead. But I would say if you want to be, you know, conscientious about your spending, then apply to a, I mean, I don't know. I feel like five-ish is like reasonable. But again, like I, I don't want to speak on that because I think that's a personal choice. I applied to three schools when I was going to college and then one of which my dad was like, that's too far away. And we just like decided that we weren't even going to move forward. Mm -hmm. So it really depends, I think, on the reality of it. And I think limiting yourself also helps make the decision later. Like if you have 10 schools that all said yes to you, like your job is harder now to decide which one is right for you unless of course there's a clear standout from the beginning um the financially viable question i i i love and i don't want this to come off as mean or anything but i do think that you should be able to afford at least some to most of tuition for a program like because a scholarship is not guaranteed. And so if you are putting all of your eggs in this basket and then there are no funds to give you, where are you left then? And I think it's a dis, it, it, schools want to help you. As I said, from minute one, we're rooting for you, we wanna help you. But every school has a different budget for scholarship and financial aid. Um, and believe it or not, more often than not, everyone is asking. So for steps in particular, I try when reviewing the um, financial aid um, components that come in, I try to spread the love. So everybody's getting a little when they really need versus mm -hmm. one person getting it all. So right. that being said, you do have to think about how am I going to fund this endeavor? How am I going to live in a new city? Um, and that also might mean that you know, maybe you've got to take a year and you got to work or while you're in the program, you got to get a job. And then that's that much more difficult, you know, time management and hustling and all that. So I don't want to say that scholarship, you know, isn't a great thing to ask for, but I think people prepared that, that they do need to be prepared. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess that that's a great point, too. I guess my thought was like, look, if I know that this is not even an option, is it better to try it to apply and, and try out or audition or whatever it is that's involved and in and, and the off chance that they could get, you know, get some scholarship money that's hidden? Or is that just not how it works? Like, it's pretty like you said, you like well, to spread the love. Yeah, I, I will be completely transparent. I find it 
a touch off putting when someone emails out of nowhere and just says like, hi, do you give scholarships? Right. Great. That's great. It's to like, know. whoa. Um, okay. Yeah. Hi. Like what program yeah. are you talking about? Like, you know, yeah. I, I just find that to be um, like, you'd only come to us if we're able to give you money or do you really want to train with us for all that we can offer? You know, those mm -hmm. sorts of Totally. In our mm -hmm. application, there is a line that states, please describe circumstances that you feel warrant financial aid consideration. This is mm -hmm. a perfect opportunity for you to tell us as much or as little as you feel comfortable. But I had someone not even fill that line out. So when they were accepted and tuition was stated, they said, I'm sorry, I can't. Or I said, oh, I, how come you didn't fill out that line? She said, I must have missed it. And it was mm -hmm. so nonchalant, like, well, you just threw away that money for the application. Like, right. you know, so to each their own, you know, I right. think that, you know, when you give, as mu again, as much information as you're comfortable with, you're just that much more um, considered versus yeah. like, it would be helpful. You know, right. it'd be helpful for everybody. Things are expensive these days and, not, and especially dance training. So I don't want to diminish the fact that families have sacrificed a lot for their dancer their entire life to get right. to this point, right? Dance is expensive. And then, you know, you are investing in your future that then you don't know what's going to come. But yeah. um, I do think that that... Um, that work ethic towards, I want this no matter what, and I'm going to figure it out also shows us that, okay, we want to invest in you also. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to say something real quick, Bree, and this, this is really geared more toward parents. I think a lot of that, do you offer scholarships, those types of emails and those types of leading with that, a lot of times comes from parents. Like, listen, sure. if you're going to dance, yeah. then you need to figure out how to pay for it. I'm not paying for that. Or, you know, you better be able to get a scholarship if you're going to continue this. Or I get a lot in yeah. the studio space yeah. where people yeah. are like, well, you know, she's not going to do this. I mean, you can't get a scholarship doing dance. She needs to be concentrating on getting an academic scholarship or, yeah. or whatever scholarship. Yeah. And I urge parents to lead with what your child wants to do with their life and working with them to figure out the financial piece after they've decided what they want to do, rather than saying, you can do what I what I will pay for, if that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, and all the reason, all the, yeah, and all the more reason to, to listen to something like this, because my dog's playing with her chew toy, sorry, um, the, to listen to something like this, because kids, Kids don't know the etiquette. We're, we're relying on people in our lives and our support system to tell us how to do things like this and how to apply. And especially if you don't have that support at home and you're just trying to figure out a way to make this dream happen on your own and you're a kid and you don't really know the etiquette about applying. That's why this conversation is so important um, about how not to lead with that question and yeah. where to fill out the appropriate information. So again, just another really great indication that this conversation very much needs to be had. Um, what, Melissa, Mindy, are the great point. Oh, yeah. That is a great point no. that they probably, you're right. Like, let me even, let me get this answer so that I know if I yeah. should even continue the process. Yeah, like, so that does yeah, like they, they don't have somebody telling them, don't ask that question because that yeah. is, that's the, the kids don't have that like long-term, you know, at that age anyway, they don't have that long-term sure this is how I'm coming off right now. They don't have enough life experience to know that, right? And unfortunately may not have the mentorship necessary to, to give them that before they reach out. But um, Mindy, what are the key elements to include in a performing arts application to make it stand out? You know, a lot of times you, you have, you guys have all these questions on the application and, you know, you can fill it out thoroughly, but at the end of the day, you're answering the questions that are on the application and everybody's answering those questions. So what is it that in your experience makes people just really stand out and how can you distinguish yourself in that in that format on paper? I'm a, I'm a big proponent on being a genuine 
human being. So Mm -hmm. um, again, Mm -hmm. as much or as little as you're comfortable with sharing, I like getting to know who you are. That intro letter is that opportunity. A few standout letters over the years, one girl, it was so poetic and she was relating herself to water. It was so beautifully written. And it just made me like, God, I really wanna meet this person. I want them to be a part of this program. They seem so interesting and curious. I had another person who did go a little bit like, wow, you're really sharing your personal story here. But it was so inspiring that they were, they were seeking this opportunity to like transition into a new phase of their life. Um, and it, it, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stand out to me when your intro letter is shorter than your letter of recommendation. I think mm-hmm. that that's interesting to me that someone else has more things to say about you than you can find for yourself. And I realized that you don't need to write something just to write it, but we're talking about your future here. We're talking about what you want to get out of this program. So I think that just being thoughtful and mindful about what you um, are sharing. I am taking the time to read all of these things. So the time that you're putting into applying, I'm taking the time to review. So again, this comes back to planning ahead. So Mm -hmm. I've had numerous students ask their teacher or mentor for their letter of recommendation with like two days notice. And then they're either not ready to apply, like to submit it at the time of the deadline. Um, And it's just, it's disrespectful. It's, you know, respect their time as well. You're asking them to do something for you and to put you, you know, ahead of the game and make you look amazing. So plan ahead for that. Um, Quite frankly, people should be looking for summer intensives like January if not earlier, that's when you can start to get the ball rolling. Our application Mm -hmm. deadline is April 1st. We also offer an early registration discount. So if you're ahead of things, then you're finding out sooner. You can get your housing situated sooner. You can get excited sooner. You can have all those things like in motion versus again, kind of like, oh my gosh, I only have this much time and and then I submit and in my letter, I'm stating to the person reviewing, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't have time to get this pulled together in time. That's not a great look. Um, So incomplete applications is is like a, hmm, that's, hmm, I wonder what happened here. Um, I was asked recently, they submitted last week, I think, I got an email. I don't work on the weekends, but of course, like I'll just check just to see if you know if there's any. But an email came through of um, I'm applying for a grant, and the application deadline is Monday. Can you please answer? And I found that to be like, oh my goodness, like I'll try. You know, so I just think that planning ahead only helps everybody involved especially the applicant Um, when and just so you know asking you know for expedited might come with added fees so just knowing that that also is a factor um, I again I want to help every student and I want to give them the best um, opportunity and the best possible outcome but they do have to understand that it goes both ways um, and that you know, the person that is doing this has other things that they're also doing. Um, so I think it comes down to shine in your best light by, by doing the work, by preparing um, and planning ahead. Mm-hmm. And um, you also have in that vein, would you agree that you have to know what's required so you will know how much time you have to put into it? I think a lot of students are like, well, I'm going to apply to fill in the blank program. And I know the due date. It's March 1st. I'll look at it on February 15th. I'll go to the website and do my research then. Well, little did you know that it required three letters of recommendation and a video. And a, 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 it's, the, it's the additional information. I find that with my son all the time. Well, that's due on Monday. Well, Monday at what time? Right. Oh, Monday at 7.15 a.m. That means just do on Sunday, sir. Yeah. Like you you have to read the rest of the sentence. 
Yeah. And, and you have to I dig out early it. enough to know right. <laughs> what no, you have to do. Me. Yeah. What is that? I think that saying that like I still I think this is so true. It's kind of cliche, but what is it? Luck equals preparation meets opportunity. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. You know, and yeah. it's so true in every case. Like it's just so true. Like do yeah. the prep, do the work, and mm -hmm. you'll be that much better for it, right? Right. And I know that um forgive me if I jump ahead to one of your questions. I know we're mm -hmm. gonna talk about later, but it pertains here also that. I also understand that it happens where you, I'll speak maybe about, you know, the conservatory and the summer intensive. You didn't even know about it and you learned about it after the fact. Yeah. I don't mind you reaching out to say like, I just found out about this program and it sounds amazing and I want to be a part of it. Would you extend the application deadline? I'm always okay with that within reason, but then be prepared for like a quick turnaround. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm extending a deadline that's already passed a month ago, then you then also have to be ready for all the things that if I, you know, give you an extension, it's it's finite and we got to get get to crack in here. And again, right. back to the financial component of that. I don't believe any student expects a scholarship. They obviously are hopeful, but especially if you're late to the game, I think it's safer to plan that funds have probably already been allocated. So um, I just wanted to kind of share that because I, again, these are things that I've observed year after year after year. And mm -hmm. I think that knowing that going in is always, um, that knowledge is helpful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I want to move on to this next one because I've heard nightmare stories about this next question. Okay. After you apply, yeah. what is the appropriate, if any, follow-up sure. process. And I'm going to lead with your parents emailing and calling is probably not on the list of appropriate follow-up protocol <laughs> after an application. <laughs> but you could, you could tell me I'm wrong, but I want to sure. that that's yeah. like on the list. Listen, I know you guys are so excited to find out, right? You're applying for something, you're crossing everything, and you're hoping for a quick response. We state, we do our applications all through the platform called Accepted. And when someone applies, they get an immediate message that states like, you will hear from the director. And it usually says, you know, um, depending on the time of year. So I'll say, um, you'll hear from them two weeks after the application deadline, or I'll make it more general and I'll say shortly after, right? To give myself also a little time to review all of these applications that dump into the platform on the same deadline, right? Mm -hmm. So I personally think that shortly after is like two-ish weeks, right? If mm -hmm. you haven't heard anything over that, I would then maybe just kindly reach out, hi, I was wondering when we might get results. And then Hopefully you will hear short. I responded right away to those responses. I'm I'm overwhelmed with applications. I'm working on it. You'll hear from me by the end of the week, right? Or like I just I do respond. Um, hounding the person? No, don't do that. Just don't do that. Well, because um, I think there's like an attitude that if I'm per persistent, this is going to say something about yeah. me. Like they're going to know I really really want this, like more than anybody else. When really. <laughs> On the other, when the other yeah. side of it is like you're sitting there going, you're giving me about 20 more emails that I have to answer. That's taking me away yeah. from going through the applications. It's making it take longer. You're annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, I mean, I, I would say I calling a spade a spade, but yeah, I think maybe one follow up um, to you know hear the status if you haven't heard. Again, for me two and a half weeks to three weeks, I think is reasonable. Um, and I do aim past for short. the application deadline though. You're yeah. saying two and a half, three weeks past when the application Correct. deadline is. Correct. However, if you apply early, you are increasing your chances of hearing early. I don't mean a week early. I mean months earlier. So oh, I had okay. students apply in January. I, I'm ready. I'm ready to take you. You're showing. You're ready to commit. Let's do this. 
If it's mm. a week before the deadline, then I'm going to watch yours with the batch that's coming in. So mm. again, this is just the way I operate. Um, it's just me doing it. So I don't have a whole committee that's like, you know, we're sitting around and you watch these and you watch these. So you are applying directly to the director of these programs at Steps on Broadway. So again, I'm so grateful that so many people are interested and that want to come, but do just be mindful that, you know, you're not the only one. And mm -hmm. I want to give you the time that you deserve to be reviewed. Um, and the other thing that I've done is kind of accept in waves which I know if you go to school with someone who was accepted before you, you get a little nervous that you didn't hear from me. So mm -hmm. sorry for that. Um, but I also have like sort of my flow where I need to like, okay, great. If these people extend it's or uh, accept, then I have more, uh, great. Now I know the next batch that I can accept. So I think be mindful that if they didn't say you should hear from us within X amount of time, in my opinion, three weeks feels reasonable, but I can't speak unlike, you know, a college that you apply in November and you don't hear until March. So I think it really depends on the program. And I try to be as transparent upfront as possible so you do know. And Bree, as you said, the persistent thing doesn't, it it's not showing your commitment. It's showing that you're hounding me and I'd like to. Right answer you when right. I'm ready to answer. Yes. Right. Such great insight because understanding the psychology, and again, this is applicable no, no matter what program you're looking at applying to, understanding the psychology, it, it, you're looking at it from your perspective as the applicant, but realize there's a whole other side to this that you maybe need to step into the shoes and understand as well. And so just, again, having this insight in psychology from somebody who is doing it and on the other end of it, is just going to give you another leg up in that process mm -hmm. if you pay attention. So pay attention. And Go back and watch from I the really, beginning. Yeah, this is this is a totally personal thing, but I really appreciate when an applicant um, reaches out to like politely decline an offer. I find mm -hmm. that it's really to say like thank you so much but I've decided to do another program or you know because I I did accept somebody in January and she wrote to me last week and I was really I you know I kind of was like hoping for her she was really talented and this and that and okay then I at a certain point was like I guess this isn't happening okay we're moving on her spot's gonna give in to someone else and then it was like wait where'd you come from like you know mm -hmm. where have you been so I totally understand that you're waiting for other answers and you're figuring your life out. So I respect that completely. But when you do know, I just find it polite. And I just think that it's really respectful. And um, then down the road when you're like, oh, now I want to come or, you know, now it works out for me. I remember you fondly. <laughs> and I think Great that it's point. just Because I, the I dance funny. world is very small and very yeah. small and you never know when you're going to run into somebody again down the line in your career and so all don't burn those bridges keep mm -hmm. keep everything yeah. happy and and open and communicative right and even exactly. just even as simply just again we're talking about how these young adults are learning these adult skills sure. so just that a baseline like communication is like my hill I'm going to die on. Like, I think that, is that the phrase? I think yeah. that, and I'm teaching my students this like every single day, like when they are absent, they have to email. Like, it's so simple, right? It's a job and you're not showing up for work today. You have to tell your boss. You have, like, it's the same principle. So I just think the practice of that instills it as, as a, a routine and as a practice so that, um, I'm not going to hold it against you in the dance world if you're not coming to my program. No way, Jose. I wish you the best of luck in the program that you've chosen to go to. But again, I just think it's an awesome practice for you as the mm -hmm. as the professional that you want to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go into my old fogey phase here and for a minute and stand on my old fogey uh, soapbox <laughs> and just talk about how, you know, I think that this, 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 um, how much I say this, 
uh, era of instant gratification with social media and having the online platforms to apply to and being able to see where your where your progress is in the application and doing all that has contributed to this because we typed our applications, put them in an envelope, put a stamp on them and mailed them out into the <laughs> to the netherworld hoping that yeah. the mail got there, hoping that they read right. it. No idea when it was opened, when a letter was coming back. Right. We had to keep the mail every day. The mail, yeah. here's like the mail. There's what's the, that's the <laughs> in that box out there. Like mm -hmm. it's just that level of patience this generation has lost because mm. they don't that you just can't go in the portal and go, oh, she read my application or, oh, I see that it's being processed or, oh, like that. And we have to, as parents and adults in the space, go, hey, <laughs> everything you don't get to know immediately, there's mm -hmm. some time that, that, that it takes. So I think that's really on, the onus kind of is on adults at that point to say, hey, everything is not, not instant. Um, so I'm off the in soapbox, but we are still here at Beyond the Steps, and we are here with Mindy Jackson talking about how um, how we can uh, the do's and don'ts of auditioning um, and the process of getting into into a program. If you did not catch this episode from the beginning, if you are just joining us, please, 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 please share. Please tag somebody. Please call somebody. Text them and let them know you need to tune in now. This is an amazing episode. You can also go on YouTube at Apollo Performance or at TP Dance Creations and start it from the beginning. We still have a lot of great show left, so don't do that right now, do it later, <laughs> but uh, definitely do it. So auditioning, what are some specific, I mean, should, should you bring your whole bedroom? Like we shouldn't mm. be bringing any green duffels, no humongous <laughs> things, I, I, would, I would say, you know, I'm not anti green duffel, love the company, but uh, what's your specific attire or equipment that you should bring to a performing arts audition? So I also, again, this is like case specific to the school. I think that um, a, a, it should probably have been provided to you ahead of time, right? You mm -hmm. should have probably, whether it's, you know, you are confirmed for this time, audition X, Y, Z, please bring. So that always mm -hmm. pay attention to that if that was sent. If it's not specified, so for instance, our video application does not specify that you need to be in a pink, black leotard and a flesh tone tight. I would like you to wear what you're comfortable in and feel your best. I want you mm -hmm. in something that shows the line of your body so that I can assess your skill. Um, it's not the time to, you know, be in something super baggy and whatnot. Um, I think that you been in enough dance classes at this point of your career, if you're applying for something, that you know the expectation, I'll say, right? Mm -hmm. So like, if it is a ballet portion of class, then dress appropriately for that, have the correct shoes on. Um, you might enjoy ballet and socks, but in my opinion, I don't think that's the perfect time to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Call me old fashioned. Um, if it's a, so I would also say like, have a bag that has like maybe a variety of things, but not your whole closet. Cause that's just overwhelming. I used to stress out way too much about what to wear at an audition. And I wasn't then mentally preparing for the actual audition. I was worried about my outfit. So right. I think that your favorite look that you feel your best in, that is not the time to try out a new top. You should try it in class ahead of time to that. Oh, I need an extra strap attached or whatever. That's not going to work today. So have, if you want to try a new outfit, try it first and then you mm -hmm. can show up in the app feeling your best. Um, having all your shoes. So having your ballet and having a jazz shoe or a heel, um, you can always ask ahead of time, like, will you be needing to see me in point? if you do point, right? So I think ahead of time, you should have been given this information. And if you weren't, make an educated decision, come prepared for anything. Um, for us, you've already submitted your headshot and resume. So that's not something you need to physically bring unless asked. Um, but it is just like always a fun, like best practice to have your headshot and resume on you. I've always been told that when I was 
you know, mm -hmm. dancing. Like you never know. You're gonna be like, oh my god, I love you. Give me your stuff. But now with Instagram and stuff, it's a lot different. You could just be like, hey, follow right. me. Um, so I would just say, be smart, which you already right. you already are. You've been training your whole life, or however long you've been training. So just don't let the outfit throw you. Right. And, and uh, there's a lot of emphasis being put on outfits these days. So I love that. Love that piece of advice. Oh, and bring a water bottle. You never know. You never know if they have a water drinking fountain, whatever it is. Maybe right. you're going to be there all day. Bring snacks, like those sorts of things. Set yourself up for excellence. Absolutely. Auditioning is nerve wracking. We know that uh, for anything. How should applicants prepare? What what would, what advice would you give them? Maybe like one thing physically and one thing mentally to do on the day of the audition to be prepared. One thing, okay. <laughs> I will try. I have a bunch of things, but let me see if I can like. You can give right, me. So the you I'll try. I'll be concise as I can. But the I want to I want to remind everybody what I said when we started today is that we're rooting for you. So going into these auditions with your nerves, let's just re, um, like rephrase those as excitement. You're excited to show what you've got to offer. You're excited for this opportunity to dance. Um, so the mental part of that is, is that preparation first. Okay, so if I had to narrow that down to one thing, breathe breathe and continue to breathe in your own power and your own confidence and your own readiness to share who you are. Mm -hmm. And then if I had to like a couple more things, get a good night's sleep. Don't be on your phone until odd hours of the night. Um, eating well, eating well the next day, hydrating, um, mm -hmm. journaling, like get your, just spill your brains out so that they're not clouding your thoughts. But what I do want to share is that the audition is one component of all the work you're always doing. So if you're always going to class and you're always prepared like professionally to like do your best, then you get to just like do that again. And yeah, the stakes feel a little higher, but you've kind of already set yourself up because you're doing the things. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. That does like it doesn't all really hinge on this one day. It is this is the culmination of everything that you have been doing, and know that what you've been doing has supported you for this day. So yeah, don't don't like get it all wound up. <laughs> and what I will say too is, um, I put way too much pressure on myself at auditions. So if I was cut, it ruined my whole day. I was upset. I needed to go shopping. I would have to, you know, it's like it ruined my day. And I really wish that I could go back and do things differently because, okay, that was that moving on. I wasn't right for that. You know, it wasn't my time for that today. You know what? Actually, I don't think that job would have been right for me anyway, or I'm going to try again next time. Like, of course, you're entitled to be disappointed. Of course you are. And it hurts every time. But I, I wish that I had been better and I'm sharing that with others so that mourn it for a second and then try to be like, okay, let's let's see how I can how I can learn from this and like mm -hmm. not let it run my way. Yeah, because I think the reality is, and I am one of those people, like there are people who are not great at auditioning. You know, they just it's it's a skill. Auditioning is a skill in and of itself. And it's something that, you know, I've always been envious of the people that can walk in and it's like it rolls off their back and they don't stress yeah. and they're able to put their best foot forward and they don't get in their own way. Um, and, and for a lot of people, that's just not the case. And so you, oh, wow. you know, as, as much as you can do to keep that, you know, keep your mental health in check and, and mentally and physically prepare beforehand, you're giving yourself your best shot um, at, at being successful at it, which it's not easy to do for everybody. No, it's not easy. And I know I made that very, like, I minimized the intensity not of an audition. All. I do also want to share that when I'm reviewing applications, I'm looking at the skill that you have and the potential you have. So I'm not expecting it to be a finished, like, 
product because that's why you want to come to us. You want to train and you want to get better. So I want people to also know that, that yes, you should present your, your best self, but that you're really good at adagio and petite allegro is not really your thing, but then you're a great at big jumps. Like that's all mm -hmm. part of you. you are. So don't try to like hide it. Don't overly edit your videos. Like, Okay. Be who you That's are. Yeah. Be, yeah. Be who you are. Um, we state very in tangentary, but we state very okay. clearly, like, do both sides of the exercise, right? So it's there for you. You don't need to ask me, should I do both sides? We also then have a solo so that you're showing the technique component and you're showing your artistry component. And that's the perfect opportunity to then show LA is really not my strong suit but I'm really good at tap or whatever it is. And that more and more is, is actually what I'm observing. So news um, to the youngsters, please stay in ballet. Please, please, Aha. please stay in ballet and work on the technique because the solos are really gorgeous and you're kind of like, mm, doing your thing. But then when it's like, Tandu, and you're, I'm, I'm surprised. So I really mm -hmm. wanna make sure um, equal importance to those things. And with that being said, your solo is a chance to show who you are, but know that like, show your best self right away. So I have some people who like start with like stillness and silence for a really long time. Right. Right. Um, they have repetition that's like a walking pattern. Like that's that's cool. That's a nice composition. Um, let's also see the stuff. Yeah. So and that, I don't and get yeah, to the good stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tricks yeah. are not important to me. Like if you have them, great, incorporate them. But um just think about it. Like if I only have, you know, this limited time to watch what you're offering, offer. Show me what right. show what you want to show. Right. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you, Mindy. That's fantastic. So if you're just tuning in, we are having a fantastic conversation with Mindy Jackson, the director of Steps on Broadway uh, and the conservatory program there. And this is just such a gem of an episode. Go back and watch it from the beginning. It is your parent, a student, um, a director, share with your students, all the things, go back and watch it. I, I promise you, you will find value here. Um, Mindy, you know, really quick before we get to homework, you know, I want to tackle a couple more questions, which is, can you provide tips on choosing the right material or piece to prepare and perform during an audition? I think, um, as I mentioned, you know, in our last segment, like showing your strengths. So, um, if that's if that's you choreographing something great if you have a teacher that you'd like to ask them to help you great like i don't have requirements in that i just say like present something that shows us who you are um i'm, I'm checking my notes um i think again this comes back to research and the program that you're interested in so if you know, for instance, the conservatory, I'm only going to speak on its steps, is a very versatile program. We train in all of the styles. Versatility is really um, paramount for the program in order to help the dancer be prepared for anything that might come their way and also to help obviously improve their technique, but also to help navigate like, wow, I um, really don't care for that, but I'm so glad that I learned X, Y, and Z from it. So if you're applying for something that is a very versatile training program, you know, maybe consider that, like that your solo wants to have components that show um, your range. Um, if you are only applying for a ballet program, then obviously then you're really being clear with your ballet things. Um, this again comes back to your skill and your potential. So I really want to feel who you are through what you're sharing. Um, I had an applicant that I, honestly, I waitlisted. Um, she looked bored. She mm. looked completely like, I, I know you're not. I know you want this, but I'm really surprised that, that you're giving me this, this, I can feel it 
through the video. So again, auditioning might not be your thing, um, but it is a performing art and we do want to make sure that it's um, showing that, that we do care and that we want to be there. And that um, I think also we made a silly little video in the fall through steps with this kind of do's and don'ts. And one of them was a little bit silly, but I was surprised that I did have to address it. Like don't um, include like your mess ups. Like if you did a take, a pass, and then you walk across the screen to your camera and then you redo it, like maybe cut that bit out. Um, mm -hmm. I don't mind if you like fell out of a pirouette and then you get right back into the next one that's different, but it was very interesting. Like we just kind of need to watch that video back and make sure like mm -hmm. that's what I want to present. It to me to get it right. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's interesting. I think also I, ha I, I give privates to a young dancer who, you know, as many dancers are, they're perfectionists and we don't want to submit it as perfect. And I do want to share with you that if you are of that mindset, it's probably never going to be perfect. So right. maybe you really tell yourself, like, I'm going to do this twice and then I'm going to be done with it. And like treat it as if it was a real light, like live audition. You you wouldn't have that proper chance at it. So like a performance, right. like so perform it. It happens to be on video, and then don't over critique yourself when you're watching it back, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, maybe you are giving it to a you know um, someone else. You know, obviously a parent is wonderful, but your dance teacher, or maybe it's like your science teacher i don't know but maybe to get like an unbiased like i'm sure they'll tell you you were great so i'm just saying if you're gonna overanalyze it and you're going to critique it a billion times and i i invite you to not do that i think do your right. best work know you did your best work and then and then let it let it ride let it go exactly mm -hmm. let it go that let it is the great advice Put it in the mail <laughs> or hit submit. Uh, thank you so much for that. If you are just now joining us, we've had an amazing conversation with Mindy Jackson about the do's and don'ts of auditioning. And she has dropped some gems on us today. You definitely need to watch this. Watch this with your students. Uh, watch it with your parents at your studios. Watch it yourself. Share it with your friends. If you want to watch this episode from the beginning, um, you can go to YouTube at Apollo Performance or at TP Dance Creations and catch the entire thing. It is time for homework. Bree, you want to lead Mindy into homework? Uh oh, you're on mute. Mindy, you are new to the show, and every week we like to give our, our, our audience homework and something they can do between now and the next episode next week to really improve in this area or gain more knowledge something of that nature. Just get better, right? So what is your homework challenge for everybody watching today? Okay, so I think that I want to share a line that a recent student actually wrote to me, and it really stuck with me. So I'm going to start there and then I give the homework assignment. And she just said, um, rejection is redirection. And I was like, oh, I love that. And it really, like, she came to us because of bummer, like other schools that she didn't get into, but now she's like so fully ready to like take this adventure. So I just want to share that line because it really stuck with me. And I think it's beautiful as like a helpful reminder. Maybe you didn't score what you wanted at that competition or blah, 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 blah. Like just allow it to kind of be like, okay, then here I go from there. So my homework to you between now and the next opportunity, um, is be proactive. It is your career. It is your future. Um, your parents will be part of the ride, your guardians, your loved ones, but it is your career. This is how you are spending every single day. This is how you are, your blood, sweat, and tears are literally like coming out of you. So I think that it's really important to take ownership and accountability um, and research and, um, I think that's my biggest takeaway is the research component and the communication component. Be the professional that you want to become um, starting now 
and take ownership of, of your future because it can be super exciting and amazing, um, but it takes a lot of hard work. And I just, yeah, I want to tack on, like, if you, all parents and studio directors, everybody, when your kids get, when your students or your children get to a certain point, and that's why I'm doing this with my fifth grader right now, make them communicate with their coaches, with their teachers, with their, obviously, you're their biggest advocate, and you need to step in sometimes as a parent, and they're not always equipped to handle every situation, but the older they get, they need to be learning how to look people in the eye and have a conversation, learning how to express themselves in written form, learning how to advocate for themselves. And the earlier we can encourage that, it's for things like this. When they get to this point in their life, it's expected. And so encourage it now. Um, we do, give home kids, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Do kids like, no. I, this is an honest question because my, my children are younger, but like is if there's emailing like involved, if a young adult is emailing their whatever it is, like you should still incur like please like have your parent on that email. Um, absolutely. So I think that that's really important to be said. If you're a or, minor, you know, absolutely. CC your parent on the email, but the parent, but the, the meeting that you want to have in person, yeah. like they're present, but you're taking the ownership to ask for that meeting, to discuss what you want to discuss or whatever it may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for clarifying because that's a whole nother episode that we could get into on a different day, but we'll we'll sure. save that one. We also like to give homework here on Beyond the Steps. It is the Steps Initiative course. It's the catalyst for this program and something we created during COVID that is still a free resource for all of you out there. If you choose to accept it, uh, it's a five-part uh course module series that tackles everything from racism, gender inequity, sex abuse and prevention, nutrition, psychology, and of course, dance, medicine, and science. Every module was curated by an expert in their field, and it is completely free to you. So log on, you can go at your own pace, and it's a great way to lay a foundation um, for education and resources about all the things I just named off. And uh, when you know better, you do better. So go ahead and take that course. Melissa, pop the link in uh, your screen right there. And um, for all of you wondering how you can access the STEPS professional training program that Mindy has referenced here in this conversation today, we're putting the link up on the screen that's stepsnyc.com backslash professional training programs. Um, and you can find out more about those programs there. Mindy, how can people, I, I know that's kind of where you, you've, you've directed everybody to get information about the program, but are there any other ways you recommend them getting in touch with you or steps or figuring out uh, to figure out a little bit more if this is right for them. Terrific. Um, well, my Instagram is there, Mindy Danson Jackson. I would love, you know, for us to share each other's journeys there. Um, my email at steps is Mindy at steps.com. Uh, the website was provided. I would love, you know, if you want to be part of the conservatory's journey, it's at Steps Conservatory NYC or at Steps on Broadway. I do want to share also that we have a academy. So I take the students who are after high school, but we have an academy for children through 18. So if you're watching this right now and the conservatory is where you want to be, but you're not quite old enough, check out the academy they have year-round programming they have summer programming um and so they are on that same website but obviously you'll just redirect yourself to the academy instead of the professional training so um email dm at least to just say i've emailed you at steps i don't want to have a conversation <laughs> steps related on instagram but um reach out if you have questions and you want to hear more um we'd love to have you with us and the other last part i'll say is steps on broadway is open to the public like 360 days a year so you can come yeah. and take classes at all levels and all styles and every class is offered virtually so please don't let your distance be a, deter a reason you can't take dance classes so please keep joining I us wish. Yes, we I'm never had time. that stuff available. Like, do it. No. God, it is like the best it, memories of my life. It. Training yeah. in New York over the summers, and you get to do it virtually. Oh my gosh, you guys. Nothing beats in person, but to have the virtual option is yeah. amazing. It is amazing. Thank you so Thank much, you. Mindy. We have enjoyed you. having you.
Um, as always, Bree, thank you for being an amazing co-host. Thank you, viewers who are out there watching. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without you. We're doing it for you and we're doing it with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We will be back next week with another great episode at 3.30 Eastern at Apollo Performance or at TP Dance Creations on YouTube and Facebook. Until then, we hope that you will continue your journey beyond the steps. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.